We're talking about all things real estate with the star of the real estate show, Polly Wooldridge this morning. And you've got a lot of things coming up, the show, lots of advice to give. And we're talking about the house we're in today. Tell me about everything. Well, for starters, we are going to talk about uh, a lot of different things. And I wanted to just say that I've got a book that's um, everything you want to know about real estate. It's in simple language, and I'm happy to give it free if anyone would contact me at pollywooldridge.com. So this house is 3407 Westbrook Circle. And the reason we're here is because uh, this is a house that's been flipped. And most people know that that means someone bought it low and is selling, you know, made improvements and selling it at a profit. So it's a great thing for an investor because they can uh, buy like a foreclosure property, a distressed property, and uh, carefully calculate their cost of the upgrades because you don't want to get in trouble with your budget. You know, the idea to flip a house is to make money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, carefully consider that and know what you can sell it for after the improvements. So that's why you, you really need a good agent to guide you through that, to find a foreclosure home or a distressed home that is gonna be in a great area for resale, help you to figure out what's gonna make it sell because kitchens and bath upgrades are important. Mm -hmm. This one has some beautiful tile surrounding the bath and shower, you know, some really nice upgrades, all new appliances, flooring. And one thing that he did with this house that I love is he took an old ordinary brick fireplace and covered it with stacked stone to make it modern. Very cool. It's very pretty too. And I like the fire pit up, out back. Hey, who doesn't like a fire pit? Mm -hmm. That is fun for kids. It's great for adults. You know, it's just a really nice uh, feature most all year long, really. So the other thing about a flipped house is who's going to buy it? The advantage in buying a flipped house is that all the work is already done. So if you've saved up your money for a down payment, you've saved up your money for closing costs, or with some loans you can ask the seller to pay the closing costs for you, then you can move in and you don't have to spend all your time working on the house once you've moved in. You can just enjoy it. And you don't have to spend a lot of extra money fixing up or improving the major systems, a new roof, or things like that, it's already done for you. So it's an advantage for an investor. It's an advantage for a buyer. It can be a good deal. Right, and that's a very good point, too, because you actually can save yourself some money by buying as opposed to renting, right? Oh, my goodness. Right now, um, if you were to buy a home about 180000 to 190000 in rent, you'd pay 1100 to 1300 a month. Well, if you were to buy that same home uh, at today's interest rate with taxes and insurance included, it would only be about eight fifty. What a savings! Wow. So why not buy? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And getting advice from you like that, there's a million things. There's a million statistics. There's so much to learn. It would make me feel better in buying or selling a home that I knew somebody that knows the market currently is on top of that. Right. And the statistics are in your favor right now, especially as a seller. I will say that uh, sales are up about 4% as far as the number of sales. Prices are up about 6% over last year and appreciation also about 4.1%. So it's a great time to sell and a great time to buy because interest rates are still low. They should be going up this year. Uh, we es estimate that they'll be about 4.5% by the end of the year. So if you're um, a seller, right now Lynchburg is in a seller's market. We're seeing uh, multiple offers on properties. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. But you have to market it the right way. You know, it's got to be ready. Right. And it's a good point, too, because if you're just sitting back and you're waiting and waiting, maybe those interest rates are going up, or you're spending more in rent than you would if you just bought the home. Right. Uh, don't use the or think of the real estate market like the um, uh, stock market. Mm -hmm. Buy when you're ready. Mm -hmm. If your credit is in good shape, if you've saved up a down payment, you're going to be in the area for a while, then it's probably smart for you to buy now. Don't think, well, I'm going to wait till prices come down or I'm going to wait until whatever that is. Wait until spring, wait until winter. Um, 
buy when you're ready. Don't wait on the market because everything is relative and ends up balancing out, whether it's the economy and jobs and pay scale along with the price of homes and the market. Good advice. And you can get so much more advice from you coming up in May and June because you have a show coming out. I'm excited. Uh, I, I love it. I uh, try to do it every summer. And so in May and June, every Saturday at 6 a.m., uh, we'll be showing houses that are actually on the market. Cool. So, you know, everybody wants to see what's for sale right now. Right. So these are houses that are currently on the market. And I have tips for buyers and sellers. You know, it's, um, it's so easy to sell your house if you prepare it correctly. Mm -hmm. So if your house is not ready, it's going to sit on the market. And then it's probably going to get reduced. And, you know, that's not what anybody wants. Um, buyers are out there looking. They're smart. If you're in a particular price range, they may have already looked at all the other houses in that price range. So if yours looks good, it's priced right, the first buyer that goes in is going to recognize that. They're smart. They know. And they do their homework these days. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And make sure you check out her show every Saturday in May and June, The Real Estate Show with Polly Wooldridge, 6 a.m. right here on ABC 13. And if you'd like to get more advice with her or you just want to buy or sell or learn about listings in the area, you can give Polly a ring at 434-851-1508 online at pollywoldridge.com or you can find her on Facebook. Welcome, I'm Polly Woldridge with John Stewart Walker, a realtor in the Lynchburg, Virginia area. In the next 30 minutes, you'll join me to see some houses that are currently on the market, and I'll share some tips from my book on all you need to know about real estate. It's for buyers, for sellers, investors, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about how the market is. It's a great time right now to get into the real estate market, whether you're buying or selling, because Home sales are up 5%, and the pricing is up 6.5% over last year. So it's a great time to sell your house. At the same time, rates are low. If you're a buyer, now's the time before they go up again. So join me in watching these uh, houses that are on the market, getting some tips that might be helpful for you. And uh, if you'd like to, Write me for my, a free copy of my book at pollywoldridge.com. Now check out these homes that are on the market now. Okay, sellers, this is for you. This week I listed a home on Tuesday and on Friday we had four offers and it sold for more than the asking price. So isn't that what you want for your house when you're ready to sell? I think so. So here's what you need to do. First of all, get a realtor. Did you know that 98% of homes sold in the U.S. are sold by a realtor? So you have that 98% advantage the day you hire a realtor to represent you. What they're going to do is give you tips on how to prepare your house to sell and pricing, which is number one important. So first of all, get your house ready before you ever put it on the market because you will get four times more traffic looking at your home the first week than the rest of the time it's on the market. So it's very important to be prepared. The first thing you want to do, walk in with fresh eyes like you've never seen the house before. 
Your realtor can do this and fix, first of all, anything that's not working, fix it. You're going to have to do it anyway because that buyer is going to have a home inspection. So go ahead and do it now. The next thing is clean. Your house needs to be clean, maybe cleaner than it's ever been. And declutter because less is best. Your house is going to look bigger and cleaner if you go ahead and pack up those knickknacks. Go ahead and um, you know, get rid of some of the things in the closet that you don't use every day. You are moving, right? So pack up, stack those boxes in the garage or basement. It'll encourage the buyer to know that you are preparing to move and um, it'll make your house look better, more presentable. And you wanna get it sold quickly, right? The average time on the market is 90 days, but you can beat that time if your house looks pristine. Make it look as much like a model home as possible which means take things off of the counters and the dressers, okay? Second, you've got to look outside the house. That's their first impression. Most buyers do a drive-by, so you want it to look fresh. Keep that grass cut, uh, landscaping clipped, and get some flowers out front. I always tell people flowers are the smile on the face of your house, and it just makes it look friendly, like I want to live there. And then think about this. If, you're, if you could say nothing about your house, what would it say when someone walks in? Would it say, a dog lives here? Mm -hmm. Think about how your house smells, how it looks. Would it say someone really loves and has taken care of this house? So you want to make that right impression because you the first time that buyer walks in, that's it. They're gonna judge your house, look for ways to save money and discount the price that you've set for it. Okay, let's talk about pricing. It's got to be right. Um, there's a triangle that needs to be balanced between your location, your price, and the condition of the house. You can't change your location. You can work on the condition. So price it accordingly. Listen to your realtor. They have access to homes that have already sold or are on the market that are like yours, and that's what an appraiser does. Your realtor will do something similar to an appraisal and price your house accurately. They should give you a range. You pick the bottom of the range, it should sell quicker, and if you pick the top of the range, it may take a little longer. So listen to them. They are your trusted advisor. They know what they're doing. They're trained to do this. And hopefully, you'll get a contract quickly. Your agent will also help you negotiate the terms of that contract because you can negotiate the price, of course, but your buyer is probably going to ask you to pay some closing costs. That can be negotiated as well. And then what about the time frame for closing? Maybe you can't close in 30 days and you need two months. That's another area of negotiation. And then the home inspection, they're going to ask you for something to be repaired. That home inspector is worth what you pay him and he's going to tell you what uh, is new, what needs to be replaced soon. So those items can be negotiated as well. I'm telling you, your agent's gonna represent you from beginning to the end. And then all you have to do after that is pack up, get ready to move, show up to closing to sign your paperwork, we'll be right there by your side, and then pick up your check and move into your new home. So good luck on selling. If you need any other advice, please contact me at pollywoldridge.com. Hello, I'm Polly Woldridge, and I'm selling a home in your neighborhood. 
Buying or selling a home is one of the most important things you'll ever do, and I want to help make that experience as smooth and successful as possible. As a realtor with John Stewart Walker, I'm a full-time award-winning agent with over 15 years service to the Lynchburg area. I have a reputation of doing business with integrity and a passion to serve. Whether you're buying, selling, or investing, contact PollyWoldridge.com. I want to talk to you about staging your home, preparing it to sell. Staging is when your agent or a professional staging specialist comes in and they may rearrange the furniture. They may take up your rugs to expose those hardwood floors. Um, it's, a, it's an important step in selling your home for the most money because stage homes sell quicker and they sell for more money. So if you're listing your home, Listen to this advice from an accredited home staging specialist, okay? Number one, landscape outside. It's got to look fresh and clean. Add some flowers in the front. You might need to paint your front door. And for heaven's sakes, make sure the front lights uh, have working light bulbs and get rid of those spider webs. It's basic stuff, but if you don't do it, it makes a difference to that buyer. Don't you want to get more money for your house and sell it quicker? Okay, then when you step in the door, make sure it smells fresh. The two best scents are lemon, because it's clean, or vanilla, because it's friendly. Don't overwhelm people with a lot of fake smell, but if it's something light in the background, you know you've always probably heard of baking cookies before the buyers come look at your house. Not a bad idea. I had a listing out in the country. She would always put bread in the bread making machine and it smelled like fresh bread in a country setting. It was perfect. So be aware, if you have a dog or a cat, just make sure that uh, buyers don't notice that first when they walk in the door, right? Okay, then um, have your realtor give you advice about moving furniture because less is best. A room that is full of furniture is gonna look small and the reason I said you might take up rugs to expose hardwood floors is because it'll make that room look bigger and cleaner. And is it an illusion? I don't know, but it works. So do what works. If you have a dark room, maybe not enough natural light coming into that room, use mirrors to help naturally lighten up that room and make it feel bigger and brighter because bigger and brighter makes it look cleaner and buyers like it more. Um, another thing, if you have heavy curtains, remove them. Just leave your blinds on the windows. Curtains are a personal taste that the buyer might not really prefer, and if it darkens that room at all, that's a negative. And neutralize. Uh, don't forget, gray is the new beige. People love gray these days, and it sells houses. So you can say, but my little girl loves her pink room. Fine, but you're selling your house. And money is important. You want to be a good steward of the things you have and make the most out of the sale of your home. And you know, buyers, they used to look for houses they could fix up and get a lot of equity in. But nowadays, they want it to look fabulous. They want it to look as new as possible. And so you need to decorate for their taste. So remove the 50 family pictures you have on that wall and fix that wall and give it a fresh coat of paint. You know, your kitchen counters should be cleared off. Again, declutter, less is best. And you know, if you have something in your house that's, that's not working, you need to fix it right away because that first week on the market is vital. So do all that before you even put your house on the market. And again, ask your realtor because we know, we know what sells and we will tell you. It's hard sometimes to say that that doll collection that you have in that bedroom is kind of creepy to a lot of buyers. It's hard to tell you that, but it's important. We need to be able to tell you what you need to hear not really what you want to hear. So pick a realtor that you can get along with, that you trust, and listen to their advice and take it because it's going to make a difference. 
Uh, you want that buyer to love your house, not your stuff. So be aware of, of uh, every sense that you have, you know, your sight, your smell, when you're walking into a house. Look at decorating with a focal point. You know, if there's a fireplace in the room, that's your focal point. Maybe you have a beautiful room with muted colors and a pop of red, right, with pillows on the bed or something. So, um, you know, you can look online, you can get great ideas from magazines, but stage your home for success. It's going to help your buyer fall in love, and it's going to help you get more money and sell faster. And guess what? If you don't do it, you might help the house down the street get sold before yours. Because if theirs is a comparable to yours in the same neighborhood, but theirs looks staged and sharp and ready to sell, and yours doesn't, a buyer might just pick theirs over yours. So do the best you can with what you have, get good advice, and stage your home, and help us to help you sell it quickly. Whether you are buying or selling a home, one of the things that is going to come up in the contract is a home inspection, because every buyer should have a home inspection, and every seller should be prepared for that. So it's the number one contingency on the contract. It's usually done within two weeks after everyone has negotiated and signed and agreed on that contract. So I'm here with one of my favorite home inspectors, Chuck mm -hmm. Haggerty, with JF and Associates Home Inspections. And I thought Chuck could share his insight into uh, why do a home inspection and what he looks for, and maybe some of the, maybe even an interesting what you found, I don't know, one day. So. Oh, I could take up the rest of the afternoon with those interesting <laughs> stories. But something you said earlier in your session was that uh, sometimes a seller will even have a home inspection. You were telling and encouraging the buyers, or rather the sellers, to go and have their house prepared and have it looking this way and doing that. And every now and then I'll work for a seller who just knows that there isn't a buyer coming off of every tree. And when one comes along, you don't want to lose them. So they'll have me come in, we'll look over the house, we'll evaluate it, try to find those problems, get them fixed before. And that's a big plus. But 98% of the time, 95% of the time, I'm probably working uh, for a buyer. You know, the buyer finds a house, you've taken them around, shown them everything you can see, they've picked a couple out, they narrow it down to one, and then that's the point where they usually go and call me and hire me in when the contract's already been signed and they put a contingency in, we like this house, we want this house, contingent based upon a home inspection. And that's whenever they hire me. And a lot of people then ask, uh, how old does a house have to be before you recommend inspecting it? And they think that the older houses are gonna be the more problematic ones. And sometimes that's the case. But I'll tell you, in over 20 years of doing this business and almost 7,000 houses, the two worst I've ever looked at yet, one was brand new and one was a year old. Wow. So you can get some big structural problems sometimes if you get a builder or a contractor in doing a house, he thinks he knows what he's doing and he doesn't. So these were some big problems I've seen. Now, older houses have a whole different dimension, of course. They have the water damage. They have the time problems. Sometimes they have termite or bug problems. So bottom line, you basically want to get them all inspected. You know, you just don't know. Brand new houses, they have to have code inspections. But those are sometimes pretty quick. And we come into a house, a home inspector comes in. He does a non-invasive, comprehensive evaluation of the house. It's top to bottom. He's looking at the roof. He's looking at the outside, the windows. He's up in the attic if he can get in there safely. Uh, each room throughout the house, you just take your time and work your way through it. You're down in the basement. Sometimes you find the big structural things down there. You're looking for the water problems that everybody's always concerned about, stuff like that. 
Uh, and then you're looking at all the systems, heating and cooling, electrical, plumbing. Uh, it's a very thorough evaluation of the house. Now, it's a non-invasive evaluation. You can't go cutting holes and disassembling things, obviously. Um, but you do the best you can visually. And how should they pick their home inspector? Uh, primarily, when people call on the phone, they'll always say first thing, hey, I need a home inspection. Uh, the house is this big. How much do you charge? Because we're all geared for that. You know, we all have to be concerned about our finances, of course. But when people ask primarily the very first question, how much does it cost? That's a good question. But the better question is, how long have you been doing this? How many have you done? How much experience do you have? What's your background? What professional affiliations do you have? Ask about your inspector, because we're just getting to the point in Virginia, you know this, in July 1st, where they're going to require home inspectors to be licensed. But for the past 21 years that I've been doing this, you didn't have to be licensed. And we had people come and go, some of them more qualified than others. So find somebody who's uh, got the experience. And what I like about Chuck is he doesn't mind the buyer following him around. He's going to educate you on what he's looking at and what he's doing. So do you, is that okay with you? Oh, that's, that's a good idea. Just yesterday, even, uh, two houses I did. The one in the morning was a big house, a professional man buying it. He was a medical doctor. Uh, he had the time. He tagged along with me for almost three and a half hours on that house, asking questions. Now, he had experience in houses, so his set of questions were different than my next client, who was a young couple, first house. I always encourage them to come along because you're going to get some, uh, uh, some lessons, some, teach you some things you may not have known, uh, show you what I'm doing. You'll understand the whole process better. You'll understand your house a whole lot better if you, ta if you can tag along with me. And tell them how to get in touch with you, Chuck. JFAinspections.com is the best way. JFAinspections.com. We've got an auto scheduling feature on the website. You can get on it. You can click on the schedule link. You can see when I'm available. Pick a time. Give me some information. Get a price and lock it in. JFAinspections.com. Thank you, Chuck. I appreciate well, your thank valuable you. information. Thank you, Polly. Always good to see you at houses. So did you see a house you're interested in? If so, give me a call. And if you'd like to get a copy of my free book, just contact me at pollywoldridge.com and look out for the car around town. Post it on Where's Woldridge, wherever you see the car, and there's a drawing every week. I'd love to help you buy, sell, or invest. So give me a call and I'll see you soon.